And this is Iglesia. Ah, good morning, church. My wife told me to do that, so, you know, I have to obey the wife. It's good to be with you. My name is Dale Loud, and I'm from Midland, Texas. And I work at the Cherry Lane Street Church of Christ. We're a bilingual congregation. And I bring greetings from them from West Texas. It's good to see my brother from Lee Street here, Richard. And I just want to say thank you to Brother H. Clay Williams, uh, who has invited me to be with you this morning. Uh, I feel privileged that I get to be with great preachers and hear God's word been preached from brethren from around the state and around the nation. It's an honor to be with you and to stand by your side to preach the gospel of our Lord. It's nothing better than preaching God's word. Uh, God said many years ago that he decided to save the world through the foolishness of preaching. I want to let you know that I will not be here for the rest of the lectureship because I have surgery scheduled tomorrow and I'm having trouble seeing, I'm having trouble, my eyes just went out one day and I didn't know what to do. I told my wife, honey, I can't see what's going on. And so they've been doing surgery on my eyes. I think they're just trying to get all my money. You know, I, I was hoping all they had to do was give me some eye drops, but that didn't work. But uh, I will not be able to stay simply because I have to get back to get, have shots and surgeries done on my eyes. You know, I will say this. My eyes didn't go out, Brother H. Clay until uh, I decided to run with this tent meeting. And when I started running with the tent meeting, all of a sudden my eyes went out. And I was like, well, hmm. But don't feel sorry for me because I'm happy, church. You know, uh, I got brethren to listen to. If I'm not preaching, I do have brethren like you to listen to uh, preach. I, I, I click on H. Clay quite a bit. And I get to listen to a lot of good gospel sermons. So, but I'm fortunate, I'm happy, and I'm happy to be with you here this morning. Uh, my lesson is not long. Uh, it's frustrating that I can't study like I used to. Uh, I can't put everything on my computer and blow it up. But I am ready to share with you the words of God. My lesson this morning come from the book of Romans. And let me tell you something about studying the Bible. Uh, when H. Clay gave me my topic, I said, man, that sounds good. But when you start studying and start reading, one subject leads to another subject, another subject leads to another subject, and you go, man, this is some good stuff. You know, I'm enjoying myself studying. So this has been a great, great lesson for me as well. My lesson comes from the book of Romans, the 10th chapter. And we will begin at verse number 13. It says, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And how then shall they call? On him in whom they have not heard or believed. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And now shall they preach, preach, uh, uh, excuse me, and how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings 
of good things. Uh, you know, this writer, this author, who wrote this book, he was a man of great compassion. And if you look at the book of Romans and you begin to study this book, you'll see that in Romans chapter 9 and Romans chapter 10, and we won't be able to go through all of this in Romans chapter 11, that Paul is pleading with Israel. Paul shows great compassion for his countrymen, for his kin people, and he's wanting Israel to be saved, but Israel is a stubborn people. He's a, they are a stubborn nation, and they wanted to, to come to God by their own righteousness. They wanted to do their own thing and not follow the will of God or the words of God. And Paul is pleading in Romans chapter 9 verse 1. He said, I would give myself if only they would come to the Lord. And we find in chapter 10 in verse 1, Paul still having this compassion. Preachers, Paul shows us that he loved people and that he loved his people and that he wanted people to be saved. That was his mission from the day he ran into Jesus on the road to Damascus. From that day forward, Paul was dedicated. He knew the mission. He understood the mission and he preached the mission. Paul was dedicated to Jesus. He was dedicated to mankind and he began to preach and he began to teach and uh, I love this lesson because it gives us hope and it tells us as preachers that we ought to have compassion for our countrymen for our people we are to love people if we're going to be members of the church of Christ now I'm going to back up just for a minute in this 10th chapter Romans 10 9 and 10 brother and I have taught a lot of Bible classes uh, I will say that uh, I've taught a lot of Bible classes I have been in many, many homes over the last 25 years. And we have baptized many people. God has given an increase and he has allowed me to go into these homes and sit and discuss with people the words of God. And I've learned some things, especially from Romans 10, 9 and 10, how uh, man take these words out of context. And then I've also learned, brother, that, that when people bring Romans 10, 9, and 10 up, then that tells me something. That tells me that they don't understand Scripture. That tells me that they are being just like Israel. That they want to create their own righteousness. They want to be saved by their own Ways They want to be saved by doing their own thing. So they say, well, I believe. And that's what the Bible says. And you know, I don't, I used to try to exegete the scriptures with them. But I've learned some things over the last years. I've learned that if they go to these scriptures, that I agree with them. If that's what the Bible says, that's what the Bible says. And I pinpoint them right there. I do not let them get away from this scripture. Because I know what's coming. And I make sure that they believe what they're saying. And I said, are you sure that's what the Bible says? They said, yes, I'm sure. I said, are you sure you believe that passage of scripture? Yes, I believe that passage of scripture. And when they tell me that. I know I got them. Because I know they don't understand what they believe. I know they have thrown up a wall because they know you church of Christ preachers, 
you church of Christ people think y'all are the only one and when that wall goes up I don't try to tear it down I'll let it stay up I just go around the wall that's what's going to happen when Donald Trump build that wall on the yeah they just going to go around the wall he don't understand uh, I had to throw that in y'all forgive me but I just go around the wall and I know if they say they believe that I said, well, okay, I agree with you. That's exactly what the Bible says. You are a person, a scholar, and you know what thus says the Lord. So let's keep going on. And then I, I take him over to Mark 16, 16, Acts 2, 38. And uh, then I asked him, I said, well, do you believe that? <laughs> it gets quiet sometimes. It gets a little sticky sometimes. But I guess God gave me a heart like Paul. I care. I care for the soul of that individual that's sitting across from me. Now, I'm not going to run. He may hit me, but that's okay. Or she may cuss me. I've had that happen, but that's okay. Because I'm there. We're there to share the message of God. That's the benefit of the privilege as preachers that we have in sharing the message of God. Uh, in the book of Kings, 2 Kings, uh, chapter 7. I'm not going to read it. Y'all just got to bear with me tonight. Go and see if the things I say are true. But in 2 Kings, uh, I believe the 7th chapter, brethren. There were some guys there who had leprosy. There were four of them who had leprosy. And, and, and reading chapter 6 and chapter 7, you find that Israel uh, was in a famine. They were starving. They were hungry. And the Syrian uh, people didn't care. They wasn't sharing. Uh, God sent his preacher to tell the king that Israel is going to eat their food and he's not going to be able to do anything about it and the king didn't believe him but God sent his preacher God sends his people let me tell you every time the devil has his angels or his people God almighty has his preachers and he has his teachers and he has his angels to deliver the message of God. And here God's preacher went to the king to tell him, hey, let me tell you something. Israel's going to eat your food. We're getting ready to buy it. There's nothing you can do about it. You're going to die. And God had already fought the battle. That's what I love about God. God knows us. He knows when we're struggling. He sees us. He knows when you're hungry. He knows when you're tired. You, you remember when, when, when the disciples went out into the sea and they got stuck in the sea and, and Jesus went up into the mountain to pray? You know, Jesus came down in the mountain and about the fourth hour, Jesus looked in the fourth hour. That's, that's about four or five o'clock in the morning. It was dark. The wind was blowing. Well, these guys were in the middle of the sea doing the perfect will of God because they followed the instructions of Jesus yet they were stuck and sometimes we get stuck and God knows that you're doing the very best you can and God will fight your battles I know you will well there back in 2nd Kings there were four guys who were dying who had leprosy who had sores all over their bodies. These four guys came to a conclusion that we're going to die. But let's go down there to the camp. Let's go down there to the Syrian army. And let's see uh, what they have. They may share some food with us. And if they do, we'll live. And then if they don't, well, they will kill us and then we'll die. And so they went down to the camp. And when they got there, they had found the camp empty 
what had happened is God had already prepared that place for them. He had already prepared for Israel to be taken care of. And these guys, what I didn't understand about the story, I still don't understand that these guys are dying with leprosy and they went into the camp and they got the food and they got real full. And then they got the silver, they got the gold and took it back with them. Maybe they were going to give it to their family members or something. I don't know. I don't know what they, these lepers were going to do with all that. But I do know they went back. They went back. And these lepers did something remarkable. They said, this is not right. Let us go tell Israel that the Syrians are gone. There's food here. They can come by food. Now picture this, brother, and there's four guys with leprosy, sores all over their bodies, sores on their feet, and the skin falling off of their bodies. And these lepers were, were hurting, and these lepers were in pain. But you know what they did? They brought good tidings when they went and told the king. They went and told Israel, hey, there's food down there. Y'all could go down there and get something to eat. That was good news because you had people starving. You had people dying of hunger. And to hear that you have food, man, that's great. Let's get down there. So they sent some guys down there just to see because they didn't believe the reference. But the guys came back and said, it is true. Let us go down there. You had four guys to bring good news to the people that were starving. Four, four guys that was hurting. Four guys who were in pain. Four guys whose skin was falling off of their feet. Yet still they brought good news. Their feet brought good news to the people of Israel and to the people of God. They told the people, go eat. I know how hard it is to preach the gospel. I know how hard it is to talk to people about saving their souls. I know how hard it gets. But when you look at Paul, you look at Romans, I mean Colossians chapter 1 and around verse 28. To me, this sums up Paul's whole ministry. He said that he was there to preach the gospel so that he could present every man, everyone that he preached to, perfect before God. That's our mission. You know, I told my wife just the other day, uh, she didn't say nothing and she still hadn't said anything to me. You know, I said, honey, I, I'm ready. She said, ready for what? I, I'm ready to go home. I'm ready to go be with Jesus. I said, I don't want to be in this world anymore. I said, but I, it's not my will, but God's will. I'm ready to go. She said, well, she did say something to church. She said, well, God got something for you to do. I said, I think I've about done it all. And I'm just ready to go. You know, but that's not, my point is that. My point is this. We have to go. And, you know, when I look at my feet and I say, I look at them and, you know, I say, well, God, I sure got some ugly toes. <laughs> You know, I sure got some feet that just just look ugly. They rough. You know, I got scales almost on my feet. God said, son, that's not the point. The point is, you are bringing good tidings to people. You are teaching people. You are preaching to people. And my job is to help make my people perfect before God. Because on the day of judgment, if they're perfect before God, they're going to say, thank you, Lord, for sending me that preacher that told me the truth. 
He preached God when it wasn't good for him to preach. He didn't hide nothing from me. I tell my people where I preach at, I say, hey, what type of man would I be if I only told you half the truth? If I only told you that, that uh, God is good, if I only told you that his mercy is sweet, yeah, is that his grace is wonderful and I don't tell you anything else and I don't tell you the other side of God and I don't tell you that adultery is wrong I don't tell you that fornication is wrong I don't tell you that, that you're not supposed to be angry with your brothers what if I didn't tell you that but when they're standing eyeball to eyeball to Jesus they can look over there and say Lord that preacher didn't tell me everything. A preacher didn't inform me that I was supposed to stay with my wife. I just had to say that, y'all forgive me. Uh, yeah. You know, Paul says in, 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 in Romans chapter 1, I believe, around verse 14, he says, I'm in debt. And I know we all know what in debt means. I know you know, right? Amen. I bet that car out there ain't paid for. Huh? That house you got, y'all know what I'm talking about. But well, Paul says he was in debt. But he was in debt to preach. He was in debt to teach. He said, I'm going to preach to the Greeks. You know, the Greeks had a very powerful influence over Rome. Uh, the New Testament that you have is written in Greek. Paul said that I'm in debt to these people. Paul says I'm in debt to the barbarians. And if you look at secular history, you find out that the barbarians didn't like Rome, and Rome really didn't like the barbarians. But Paul says I'm in debt. Not only to them, but I'm in debt to the wise. And I'm in debt to the unwise. Paul says, I am ready, in verse 15. He says, I'm ready to go preach. I'm ready to tell men, wise, unwise, barbarians, Greeks, Jews, Gentiles, black, white, Mexican, it doesn't matter. He says, I'm ready to preach this gospel. I'm ready to give them the good news of heaven, how God sent his son and opened the doors. That's good news, that we have a chance to get to God and live forever. That's good news. Man need to hear that God has prepared a place for them. That heaven is ready. That's good news. And when your feet walk in to the home of men and women and you tell them, hey, God has opened heaven doors for you. God has a room for you. He loved you so much that he sent his son to die for you. All you have to do is believe this and obey this and heaven will be your home. That's good news. I'm telling you brothers, we bring good news to people. We're saving their souls. We're helping our brother and save his soul. We're helping our sisters. Those are the feet of preachers. That's our responsibility to bring Good news. Good news. Let me tell you something. That was, I preached a funeral about six weeks ago. And about a year and a half ago, I went into this home. Sit down with these people. And I probably went over there and the sister could cook. So I enjoyed going over there teaching because she enjoyed cooking. And I was like, yeah, boy, this is all right. Cook, sister. Cook, man. But you know what? She obeyed the gospel. And she died about six weeks ago. Preached her funeral. You think she's happy now? She, you think she's happy that my feet went underneath her table? You think she's happy? She's jumping for jubilant and joy right now. I went into another lady's house and she was dying. I didn't know how severe it was. 
and I taught her about Jesus and told her about heaven and this lady obeyed the gospel we had to baptize this lady in the bathtub because she was that sick and two days later she died and I said whoa you think she happy right now you think she's happy that that preacher's feet came through her front door sit down at her couch and told her about Jesus you think she's happy now I got another good friend of mine his name was Walter Haynes brother he was there under brother Richard there at Lee Street but I went into his home and I preached the gospel to brother Walter and me and Walter sit there now, this is the first time brothers in my life I ever tried to talk to someone out of being baptized I was, the, when we got there to the water it was in the middle of December and the water was cold and it was freezing cold. And water, I said, Walter, boy, this water's cold, man. I said, I, do you want to go in there? He said, brother, loud. He said, brother, I'm here. I said, well, okay. Let's get down into this water. So we both went down into the water. That's the first time I ever tried to talk to somebody. Let's just wait. Let's wait till it heat up a little bit. Yeah, Walter was like, no, we're going to do this right here, right now. Amen. Brother, I didn't baptize hundreds and hundreds of people. I, didn't, I mean hundreds of people, maybe a thousand. I don't know. But that's the first time. I'm not bragging, brothers. I'm just sharing. That's the first time that I ever asked anybody to wait. But guess what? We went down into that water, just me and him. And he rose up. And he served with Richard underneath Brother Richard there at Lee Street. And about seven years ago, my friend died. And he was a good friend. Walter and I, we grew up together. We spent time together. We did everything together. We knew each other. Ever since we know how to knew that we would know him. And he died. You think he's happy now? You think he's happy that the feet went into his home? You think he's happy that he heard Brother Richard Sunday after Sunday? He heard Richard every Wednesday. He transformed his life like the rest of us. He became a faithful man of God. And Richard, I mean, and, 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 and Brother Walter, uh, he died. He's gone. That's good news. Well, let me tell you, brother, in the book of Revelation, uh, the third chapter, around verse 20, Jesus says, I stand at the door, and I knock. You know, that's not Jesus knocking. That's you knocking. You're doing it for Jesus. You're taking heaven to someone's door. And you are opening heaven's door for someone who don't know Jesus. Someone who haven't obeyed the gospel of our Lord. Or maybe you're going to see a brother who has erred in the faith. And you're trying to restore that brother. That's good news. Our job is to bring good news to the world. You preachers, you are the one. God said, I have decided to save the world through the foolishness of preaching. And it's you who bring glad tidings to people. When their family is hurting because of death of a loved one. It's you preacher who help restore those who are hurting because the children are not acting right. It's you who restore happiness in people from the words of God. It's you who build up. It's you who bring peace and happiness to homes by the word of God. You are the one, preachers. Don't be scared. If those preachers want to go out and do all this stuff and take, try to build mega churches and have all these praise teams, praise dancers. I got that from Brother Lynch. 
and, and do all this stuff. Let him do it. There's enough souls out there to fill up every building. But you got to go. And you got to teach the word to God. Brother Lynch, I can't run. I heard in your sermon about running. I just have to meet you there because I got to walk. All right. But I'm going to walk till I get there, okay? Uh, I'll get there, but not as fast as you, brother. May God bless you. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Good news. Thank you, brother. Good news. Amen. Brother. Thank you. I'm going to thank Brother Lyle. I met Brother Lyle about three years ago, the first.